at this moment, the man who would like to invite Coach Stan Johnson to please come forward and share with us a reflection of today's reading and his topic for today. So please come forward. I want you guys to give yourselves a round of ovation. In, in, in all honesty, I, you know, I've been, um, I've been a coach for 20 years. Uh, I've been in places like Marquette, the University of Utah, Arizona State, Cal State Northridge, uh, a lot of places. I've been in a lot of venues. And one thing I talk to my team about is about a spirit and the kind of energy that it takes to be a winner. And walking in this environment, this is as good as any environment I've been on. So you guys got something to do. I, um, you know, when I was asked to do this by Dan, thank you very much for making this happen. You know, I, my thought was, I wanted to talk to you guys. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. All right, good, I like that. I wanted to speak to you as if I was speaking to my team, okay? You guys right now, um, you're, you're growing up and living in a different different kind of world, an even different kind of world than I lived in. And I wanted to deliver a message that could resonate with you in your time. So I wanted to use some words that I use in, in my sport, in my profession, in my business, right? As I go around, as we're trying to build Loyola Marymount, into a national power in basketball. There's two things I talk to my assistants about. I want players. I don't want pretenders, right? You're either a player or you are a pretender. And that doesn't mean just as an athlete or a student or a business person or a brother and a sister, that encompasses everything. So I wanted to leave you guys today with a couple things. How can you tell if you're a player, or how can you tell if you're a pretender? And I'll say this to you, there were parts of my life where I was a pretender. Like I did things for me, right? That's the number one definition of a pretender, okay? So I, I got 17 things I want to give you today, okay? And hopefully it'll help me move you. Okay, number one, okay? A player has a servant's mindset. Everybody say a servant's mindset. A pretender has a selfish mindset. Say selfish mindset. Selfish mindset. Cool. So people ask me all the time, Coach, how can you tell if someone has a, self, a servant's mindset? Well, you can always tell if you're a servant by the way you act when you get treated like one. Is your ego too big? Is that job too small that you were asked to do? When you're at home and your parents ask you to pick up your room or do the dishes, do you do that with a servant's heart or do you do that with an attitude? Okay? Philippians, Philippians 2, 3, uh, verse 3 through 5 says, Do nothing okay, from rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is, your, which is yours in Jesus Christ. All right? That's biblical. So the number one rule, are you a servant? Do you have a servant's mindset? Or do you have a selfish mindset? Number two, players are mission conscious. Pretenders are position conscious. All right? A real player in life, will give up his or her's position to accomplish the mission. A pretender will give up the mission to get their position. So in basketball, right? There are some guys who would rather get 30 points in a game and lose and look good on Instagram than to get 10 points and win a championship, right? What you're asked to do in this school, are you taking a lesser role so the school can do more, so your family can do more, or are you asking for more for yourself regardless of what happens to anybody, okay? A player is mission conscious. Number three, 
players run their own race. And if you don't hear anything tonight, I want you to hear that. A player runs his own race. Pretenders compare. Like we live in this generation now of social media, Instagram, Twitter. I don't have a Snapchat, but my kids do. But that's a big thing, right? Snapchat. We're constantly comparing. The Bible says comparison is the thief of all joy, and it's the stretcher of the truth. So I want to read you this quick story. My team last year, we were, we were in a rough spot, right? And I wrote a letter to all our donors, all right? And I don't know if you guys have heard this story. It's about the elephant and the dog. And I want to read it to you. An elephant and a dog became pregnant at the same time. Three months down the line, the dog gave birth to six puppies. Six months later, the dog was pregnant again. And nine months later, it gave birth to, one, to another dozen puppies. This pattern continued, all right? On the 18th month, the dog approached the elephant, questioning the elephant. The dog said, are you sure you are pregnant? We became pregnant on the same date. I've given birth three, three times to a dozen puppies, and they are now grown to become big dogs. Yet, you are still pregnant. What is going on with you? The elephant said, there's something I want to tell you, okay? And there's something I want you to understand. What I am carrying is not a puppy, but an elephant. I only give birth to one elephant in two years. Okay? When the baby hits the ground, though, the earth feels it. Okay? When the baby crosses the road, all human beings stare in awe of that elephant. Okay? It draws attention. So what I'm carrying is mighty and it's great. My message to you guys, do not lose faith when you see others receive their blessings. Do not lose faith when you look at Instagram and somebody may have something you don't have yet. Do not lose faith because things are going slower for you in your life, if, if it is going that way. Because what you have in you is greatness. And greatness requires time. See, the world we live in is fake. A lot of it is. We all want to be great. We all want to look this part. We want to have this now. But none of us want to go through the process of being great. Number four, players deliver the goods. Pretenders promise the goods. How many of you in here have been promised things that have not come true? Raise your hand. How many of you in here know somebody who's always saying they're going to do something but can't ever come true? That's a pretender. How many of you in here have said you would do something and have it? Right? We can all be better. Players promise the goods, right? But they deliver. You got to deliver on your word. Okay, number five. Players love to see others succeed. Pretenders are only interested in their own success. If you're somebody who can't be happy for your teammate, for your classmate, for your friend, because they've got something going, you are a pretender. And your blessing will never come because God knows your heart. It is okay to be happy for others. If something is happening for somebody else and it's great, that, doesn't, that does not mean it's gonna take away from what's coming to you, okay? Number six, players value integrity. Players value image. Right? I'm going to go back to that. Players value integrity. Pretenders value image. Again, we live in a very image-driven society. I love this quote. It says, the rules of navigation are what's under the surface should carry more weight than what's above the surface if the ship is going to make it through the storm without capsizing. Integrity is like this. What's under the surface better be greater than what's above you're going to come through some hard times in life. That's what life is. Life is hard. 
If things are going good for you right now, good. It's going to get hard. And your integrity and what's in your heart is what's going to get you through those moments. All right? Number seven, players make the hard choices. Pretenders make the soft choices. You know why hard choices are hard to make? It's because the price is always paid on the front end. When you're going to make a hard choice, you're going to pay for it on the front end. When you make a soft choice, the price always comes on the back end. So if you do the easy thing, it may seem great right up in that moment. Things may be good. But a week later, two weeks later, three weeks later, four weeks later, it gets harder. Okay? We all love success stories. But we don't love to go through the process of what that requires. Walt Disney. Everybody know who Walt Disney is? Okay? Walt Disney, did you know Walt Disney was fired from the Kansas City Star because he was told that he lacked imagination? Think about that, right? Oprah Winfrey, anybody know who Oprah Winfrey is? Okay? Oprah Winfrey was fired as a TV reporter because she was told she wasn't cut out for TV. Anybody familiar with Steve Jobs? Steve Jobs was fired from his own company. Okay? Bill Gates. Anybody know Bill Gates? His first company flopped. Albert Einstein. Who knows Albert Einstein? Okay? He did not speak until he was four years old. Okay? He couldn't read until he was seven, and eventually he was expelled from school. Michael Jordan. Who knows who Michael Jordan is? The great Michael Jordan did not make his varsity high school team at some point. But you know what? They all made the hard choice. They kept going. And guess what? They had a tremendous payoff on the back end. The hard choice is always, it always includes risk. You can't play it safe and be great, okay? Whenever you see a successful person, you see a successful family, you see a successful business, somebody made a hard choice. Number eight, players finish out. Pretenders fade out. Why did a lot of people love Tom Brady as a quarterback? Right? Because when the game is on the line in the fourth quarter with two minutes on the clock, he's probably going to drive his team down the field and win the, back, and win the football game. Right? LeBron James, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant. The reason people love those guys, why? Because with, with the ball in their hands and the game on the line, they were going to finish out. Players finish out. All right? Number nine, players never overestimate the event okay, and underestimate the process. What do I mean by that? So you guys, you, you're in school, you're studying, right? Well, when the test comes, I'll be ready. It's not about the test. It's about your preparation before the test. I don't know how many athletes we have here. I've had some guys on my team, coach, I'm a gamer, coach. I'm a gamer. I'm not a practice guy, but I'll tell you what, when the lights come on, I'll be ready. How many of you guys think that really takes place? It never happens. The process is about the event. Players value the process, all right? Number 10, players are transparent. They have nothing to hide, nothing to hide. They really, really, truly are free, okay? Pretending to be real is way more exhausting than just being real itself. And I want to encourage everybody in here to be you, to be real, okay? 11. They are true to themselves. They know inwardly if they've given their best. Everybody in here, we know. The one person, I tell my team all the time, you can lie to me all you want. The one person you can't lie to is yourself. You know when you've given your best. You know when you're giving your best at home. You know when you're giving your best uh, in class. You know when you're giving your best on the field. You know you're giving your best in music. Even right now, you know if you're giving your best in terms of listening. Are you here? Are you present? Are you taking something from it? Or are you just sitting here? Okay? Twelve. They are teachable. The best players I've ever been around are teachable. They have egos, but you know what? They know how to limit it so they can be successful. They surround themselves with people who are better than they are. And I would tell you this. I read this once. It said, if you look around in your life, Take the people, the five closest people to you. Okay, whoever those five people are. 
that's pretty much an indicator of where you're going in life. And I would tell you, you want to surround yourself with people who are smarter, okay, who are more driven than you are, because that's going to lead you to your dreams. Thirteen, they love seeing other people advance. We've already kind of talked about that. There's no jealousy. Fourteen, they give their organization, they give their family, they give their school, they give their team hope. Why? Because you're a part of that team. As you sit in here today, are you giving this school hope because you're here? Are you giving your family hope because you're in it? Are you giving your team hope because you're a part of that organization? Okay? Fifteen, they are tenacious. They know what it takes to win. They are persistent. There was a national survey done with sales executives. All right? This is a true story. The National Sales Executive Association survey found these amazing things. 80% of new sales are made after the fifth call to the same prospect. 48% of all sales people make one call, then they cross that prospect off the list. 25% call three times and then quit. 10% keep calling. It's the 10% of people in life that are tenacious that are rewarded for that. I want you to be tenacious. 16, okay, before I close. Players allow their behavior to dictate their feelings. Pretenders let their feelings dictate their behavior. What do you mean, coach? That's what I mean. How many of you guys have had these grand plans? Saturday morning, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to work out. I'm going to wake up and I'm going to do this. I'm going to wake up and I'm going to do And then you wake up and you're tired and you don't do it. Have you been there? Right? So in that moment, right, in that moment, when you tell yourself, I'm not going to do this because I feel this, guess what? You're letting your feelings dictate your behavior. Pretenders say, you know what? I am tired. I don't feel like going to school today. I don't feel like helping my mom out today. I don't feel like helping my dad out today. But you know what? I'm going to do that because that is going to get me closer to who I want to be. Nobody cares about your feelings. If you want to be successful in life, you're going to just operate based on how you feel. You're not going to go very far. The great ones don't feel good every day. That is to separate. The last thing, 17. Players truly believe that love is the way. They believe it's the greatest power on earth. It conquers all things. And I know that is something this school truly reflects, represents, and believes in. I want to encourage you every single day, okay, to make the small, smart choices consistently. And if you apply that over time, you're going to have great success. I don't care what happens in life. Everything that you guys want is there. And sometimes when things don't happen the way we want them to, be, to happen, that's not you being rejected. That's you being redirected to your purpose. That's God sending you on a greater mission. The only way it doesn't happen for you is if you quit. Don't ever quit. Don't ever quit. Don't ever quit. Just keep going. Just keep going. It's been an honor to be here. I hope you took something from that. And I pray and hope that when I look up and we're playing Gonzaga in our place, I'll see you guys in our gym sharing on LMU, and I hope we've won some lions over today. But great being here with you guys.